Ну да, как анекдот, так обязательно бородатый надо. Welcome, blech. I mean, back stalker. Back to the zone we go again. This time with twice as many cancerous tumors, we call Vanya and Vasily, we call Bossa and strong vodka in our pockets, few bullets in our magazine, and cheeky breaky in our brain. Steady your radiation induced shakes, cause this time it's a proper blech mode. Stalker Clear Sky is known to be the bad one in the soon-to-be quadrology. Bugs, bad performance, and whatever the blin else. But was it really as bad as I and everyone else remembers? Story-wise, this is a prequel to Shadow of Chernobyl. You play as a loner called Ska. Upon a violent eruption that's the Zone's version of morning after Indian food that catches you off guard, you find out that thanks to a mix of radiation poisoning, copious amounts of alcohol, and whatever the blin this is, you have a superpower allowing you to survive these emissions. I bled! But not these ones? Hmm, weird. Regardless, every emission degrades your brain, and sooner or later you'll turn into a brain-dead half-alive zombie with no awareness to anything but booze. Otherwise known as a regular gopnik. The zone is also spewing out more and more emissions, like a splinter in a hemorrhoid. And that splinter's name is Strelok. Yes, you from the previous game before the amnesia. Now go kill him! As I started the game, I was rather pleasantly surprised how many good additions they added to the game in just 12 months. You start out in a very cool new swamp map, there are way more voiced characters than previous game, graphics have slightly improved as well, we also get to return to maps from previous game but with slight remixing. And now there are guys that act like fast travel points, though I don't really know why you need them when you got the teleporting juice. <laughs> Also, we got emissions too. In theory, a cool atmospheric random event when you have to run and hide in a fucking bunker like a coward. You know, like that one suka. Though, in execution... Yeah, don't worry about it, it's fine. Nowhere to rush. We also get artifact detectors. Now, to find artifacts, like a dog's barf in an apartment, you slowly smell around until you accidentally step in it. It's a nice little change since the last game's uh, <coughs> artifact hunting was uh, basically this. And probably the best addition, the gun and armor upgrading system. Yes, now you can finally upgrade and unclog your favorite Suka Blaster 9000. Unless, of course, it's complete pissed yet. Now you have a good reason to hunt for artifacts, or commit mass gopnicide for their sweet, sweet loot. Though to get access to better upgrades, you'll have to find flash drives, and that mechanic kind of feels like an afterthought. But pohoy, pajom! Of course, in 12 months, developer GSC couldn't really have made a whole new game, so just like the Gopnik Spellmen, the meat of this game is kind of placebo levels. Still, they did change a few things, like the mutants. No, nah, I mean these kinds of mutants are far more dangerous and harder to avoid. There's also no more hunger or thirst meters in the game, so I guess Chernobyl radiation is magic, because pistols also have no iron sights anymore either. But the biggest selling point was the faction system. Now, in Shadow of Chernobyl, you could help out a few characters, however, now you can join them. Yet doing missions for them will piss off Zhenya and Igor next door, either because they asked you to kill Zhenya's friend, or just because you're being complete W. Also, you can take part in faction expansion and go to war. But usually it ends up in this. Quick! We're getting slaughtered here! Damn you! Where on earth are you? Help me! The army's beating up on fellow stalkers! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! We can't hold on much longer. Thanks for coming to our help. And speaking of factions, renegades are bandits, but not bandits, so you can shoot them. Clear Sky are the good guys who saved you, but don't appear in later games, and we'll get to that. The duty is, well, still duty, and the freedom is... Come by next week, we're expecting some real high-class herb that'll get you higher than high. Freedom member! Together, we will save the zone! The only group of truly free people... Give me five, bro! What's it gonna be? A hard drink or a soft smoke? 
Чё, бля? Freedom now is a pot smoking band of dipshit gopniks in green tracksuits, chilling, vibing, growing another tumor, and occasionally Kurt Cobaining each other after a good bong rip? Чё за хрень, а? И я! Я? Ну, куда говорим не? Вот, ты вошел в это, Эйшот. Кому не видишь? Ты не имеешь ничего с импрессивным маленьким девочкой. Нет, ты вошел. Я имею что-то, чтобы показать тебе. Или я должен стикать его, чтобы ты увидел. And then there are bandits. Yes, you can actually finally join them. And why wouldn't you? Because... Well, monolith and military, well, there are still monolith and military. Another thing unchanged are gun mechanics. Worst shooting mechanics I've ever seen in any FPS game. The issue with it is that they've taken skill practically entirely out of the equation and it all just comes down to blind luck. But in Clear Sky, it's like this. You aim at something, you pull the trigger, and then you roll the dice. Sometimes the bullet will hit, most of the time it won't. Aiming at someone's head and firing means the bullet should hit them in the head. It shouldn't miss them one out of six times as an artificial way to simulate recoil or weapon shake, alongside things like whether or not your weapon is gonna randomly jam mid-fight. Now I know it's an old video, but it doesn't excuse being wrong. Now, Stalker is touted as one of the more hardcore shooter games out there, not so much of how real the guns look or feel, but because crap guns have barely better aim than trying to piss with an erection, even if you're not drunk, so it limits the range at which you can be effective. Or you can always try to risk and shoot from afar, since you can still deal a lethal headshot. And the progression comes from finding better gear that's more accurate. Scarcity and accuracy is the key of Stalker's unique design, that works so well. But anyways, at this point I thought, okay, Clear Sky actually is better than Shadow of Chernobyl, that's so cool! And as I moved out of the swamps and onto the cordon, I thought, well, I must have imagined that this is a bad game. And uh, this kind of uh, set the tone. For Clear Sky, the AI got jacked up so much on aimbot that you could see their testosteroid veins. On Veteran, the hardest difficulty, you'll be quick saving the fuck out of this game just to progress because everything will kill you. Anomalies? Dead. Random eyeless doggo? Dead. Bandits using shit pistols? Stray bullet to the head? Dead. <laughs> oh, you didn't say bled, suka! <laughs> However, the quick save button is also a double-edged sword too. I committed big pizdjets, accidentally killed the freedom guy, and quick saved over my last save, so now backing out of this. And now everyone's yelling, And this is the faction system. Once you're in the red, you're fucked. And then the cavalcade of literal pizdjets washed over me like a smell of Gopnik's crotch. Um. Go Yantar, visit scientist. Zombies keep on spawning endlessly like a former shitty Gopnik clown car, otherwise known as Zhigul. Eventually killing off security. Now to visit scientist again, kill off zombies quickly or else a new wave spawns in. Faction system's so cool. You join one of them and the rest now hate you. Want to upgrade a specific gun? Can't. Mechanic of this faction hates you now. Do a story mission. Suddenly the game decides to rob you and doesn't give money back. Did you know? Oh, the game is super atmospheric? Let's ruin it with combat music. Big master difficulty? Pinpoint accurate grenades at your feet every few seconds. Pashlazara! Improved engine, lighting and visual effects? Let's make zombie town defense unplayable to show off. Developers got more time to flesh out story and script events? Let's pit bunch of drunk loners with sawed-off shotguns against military with AKs and tell the player to help out. One second later? Oops, you were too late, all the loners are dead. More scripted scenes, you say? Shoot down the sniper. And again. And again. And again. Clear Sky Faction is finally helping you out in Lumansk. Oh no, we ran out of cigarette cause push out this idiot. And of course, get shot, start bleeding. Get bit, start bleeding. Sneeze, say and start bleeding. Do anything. Oh my 
safe to say this soured the taste. But still, there were some more good things. Like the Red Forest is phenomenally well made area with its own atmosphere and so are the swamps that act as games tutorial. Weapon and armor upgrading system gives you a great variety of upgrades and repairs while motivating you to gather artifacts and stashes for money. Well, that or hauling used guns all over the place. However, if this is Shadow of Chernobyl, but upgraded... And the engine too was improved with better volumetric and dynamic lighting, which is a big part of why Stalker is atmospheric in the first place. What the blank? So, can we not overlook the issues? Mm, no. Notable amount of effort has gone into scripting scenes, and sadly, Stalker is not one of those open type worlds that accounts for <coughs> variety. So, you'll be doing these scenes in one and only one way. The bridge scene, for example. Just shoot these fuckers and don't forget the snipers. They'll keep on spawning. By the end of the scene, you'll feel like you've eradicated the majority of Gopnik contingent in the whole Eastern Europe. Now, who's gonna chain smoke and support tobacco companies, Suka? Huh? But you know what weirded me out the most? Aside from monolith and military, there are no cunts around. I mean, in literal sense. Where are my female stalkers at, huh? Where are my Gopnitzes at? Together with Clear Sky Team, you take the bridge and go into Limansk. You fight through monolith and military ambushes to catch up with Strelok. Otherwise, the zone, like a prolapsed hemorrhoid, will burst and it won't be pretty. Then, all of a sudden, Clear Sky guys run out of cigarettes and have decided to chill out. You continue on alone and fight through several notable encounters in an increasingly linear corridors until you reach a literal fucking hospital with another MG nest, aimbot AI, and unkillable sniper that you have to shoot from a very specific location after zigzagging through these corridors, and then finally. <laughs> Okay, finally, MG's dead, Sniper's dead, the chopper... Oh god, yeah. Now I can finally reach the Chernobyl NPP. I bet it's gonna be way more different from the last game, I can't wait! Glad to see you, man. We've done the impossible. We got a visual on Strelo! What the blah was that? Did they again run out of money and cut the ending? If you're confused, so was I. I hadn't played Clear Sky in such a long time, I forgot about the ending, but it's true. You literally get teleported to the ending scene with a ghost rifle in hand and so much spare armor shoved up your ass, you can kill God. The battle would be beautiful. But no, Strelok is right there. Now he's dead. Much skill. The same beast. Clear Sky had a great jump off point with the Shadow of Chernobyl, and this is what I did. I recall going to my friend sometime after the game launched and he explained how poor the performance and frame rate was. This was the first game we decided to download a patch for, which in 2008 was something you never did because games actually were released to work properly. But I guess Clear Sky was ahead of its time. Today though, in retrospect and having better PCs, the game has so many great improvements to Stalker's gameplay, weapon upgrading, artifact detectors and faction system to some degree, and even the failed attempts at scripting more games events were something that hinted that there was a genuine effort placed in the game. But what turned the game into complete piss jets was the AR and once more the hyper rushed ending that will give anyone a whiplash. You'll probably forget that you even finished the game in the first place or how you did it. You probably didn't even notice Clear Sky, you know, the faction are all dead by the end of this. And when it comes to characters, somehow the open world as well as the static places felt no well, lesser than Shadow of Chernobyl. And yet, despite the shortcomings, there's something alluring in the zone, in Stalker. Even after playing through the damn thing, I recall story moments and set pieces far more vibrantly than any of the AAA games today, or especially at the time, like, say, Crisis or Fear. 
There is a reason why, even at its worst, Stalker is such an incredibly evocative and fun game to play. Yeah, but most importantly, this one gave us Bandit Radio!